Hey, welcome to the TTSG Solo Cast episode 4. I'm Lee, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about how to design scenarios for tabletop skirmish games. This has got to be one of my favourite things to talk about, and creating scenarios is an essential part of tabletop skirmish game design. Scenarios provide players with a specific objective to achieve and add variation to gameplay. So in this episode, we'll discuss the importance of variation in tabletop skirmish games and how to design scenarios that maintain player engagement, enhance narrative immersion and establish clear objectives. Let's begin with variation. And variation is key in creating an engaging tabletop skirmish game. Players want to feel like their choices matter and that there are different paths to victory. Designing scenarios with varying objectives, terrain and deployment zones can help keep these things fresh and exciting. It's really fun to include unexpected events or twists during gameplay and these can create memorable moments and add tension to the game. In Population Z, I've designed it so that you can take your skirmishes up a notch by selecting a weather condition from the weather table during the pre-skirmish sequence. Now, this isn't unusual. Many games have weather and it does dramatically change what could be a straightforward skirmish. Now, I'm thinking of Blood Bowl right away. That weather table was always like risky depending what you're going to roll because it had a, such a huge impact on the game and the tactics you'd employ as well. And depending on who you're going up against, that had some effects too. So weather is a really important one, but using any environmental effects are going to help with the variations and certainly going to add to some challenges for your players. Sticking with weather conditions though, these can make specific actions more difficult. They're going to force players to develop alternative strategies. And it's also fun, I think, if you match the weather in the game to the weather outside your window. So if it's raining outside and you're playing a skirmish game with rain included in the rules, then you're going to get some free sound effects and it just builds to the immersion. It's a really cool thing to do. Okay, now let's have a look at player engagement. And to maintain player engagement, it's important to design scenarios that have very clear objectives. Players should know what they need to do in order to win and how to achieve that goal. This clarity is going to help players focus and then make those strategic decisions. And objectives can vary from destroying a specific enemy unit or NPC to capturing an objective marker on the board. And as important as clarity, we also have to look at setting boundaries. And when players have boundaries, they can then create strategies to work within them to achieve the objectives. Adding a twist partway through a game, such as a new NPC entering the battle or a random environmental effect, they're going to prompt players to alter their plans, adapt and overcome the new problems they face. But they still know exactly what the objectives are and they know how to achieve them. They might just have to take a few details on the way or change their strategy slightly. This is all going to come together to help tell that story. So let's have a look at narrative immersion next. To create an enhanced narrative immersion, scenarios should have a story or theme that the players can follow and develop through their actions and the outcomes of those actions. This can be achieved through the use of unique terrain, specific factions or characters, or even through the scenario objectives themselves. For example, I'm working on a sci-fi special forces game. I'm in the very early stages, but I've got a good idea of how I want to go with it. But in that game, I've come up with a scenario already where a group of elite soldiers must rescue a hostage from enemy forces. Setting a finite number of rounds is going to create a sense of urgency during that mission, and the consequences are going to add up and affect the game's overall story. If the special forces team fail to rescue the hostage, vital information is perhaps passed on to the enemy, which will make their next mission more difficult. On the flip side, if they succeed, then they'll get a bonus for their next mission and also they'll have rescued their comrade. So all good if the outcome's favourable, but it's cool to have all those consequences in there because there's something at stake. And if it all goes wrong, perhaps through the player making the wrong choices, then they're going to have to live with their decisions and act accordingly. This is all playing into campaign progression, and this is another important aspect of designing scenarios. 
in a campaign, the outcomes of previous games can affect the next game, as we just discussed with that sci-fi special forces game I've got planned. Having these outcomes affecting the game creates a sense of continuity and allows players to see the consequences of their actions playing out. Scenarios can be designed to affect the campaign in different ways, such as changing the availability of a certain unit or maybe a character that they can't take into battle, perhaps removing resources or even changing the campaign's narrative completely. You could, for example, go down the same route that we see with Escape from Stalingrad Z, Project Reza and Gates of Nilheim by Raybox Games. The outcome of one scenario is going to affect which scenario you go on to next. It's a bit like a read your own adventure book, but you play it out in a game instead. And it's great fun because you never know where you're going to go next. And you could play a campaign multiple times, but end up in different places each time. For my zombie survival game, Population Z, I approached it as if each skirmish scenario was an episode in a TV show. Survivors have different objectives to achieve and they'll meet new characters and NPCs each time. The consequences of each scenario will impact the next and players use the set boundaries of the core mechanics and then the individual skirmish rules to act out and tell their stories. I'm a huge fan of the Walking Dead series. I've watched it so many times, like all of it. It's out, It's crazy, really, the amount of time I spent watching that. But I really wanted to create that on the tabletop and not just the battles. I wanted it to be resource heavy. So in the game, there's a lot of resource management and there's a lot of searching. You can be stealthy. It's not all out fighting. So you're just not going up against NPCs, enemies all the time. But of course, there's lots of zombie slaying and there's going to be lots of encounters with NPCs, but also other players and their groups if you want to. But it is a solo co-op game at its heart but it could easily be played player versus player with the zombies joining in as well, which is just awesome fun. OK, so we've covered a few of the key elements now, but let's focus on the skirmish map a little bit. And a good skirmish map can convey information clearly and concisely that is easy for the players to digest. The map must identify objectives, crucial terrain, deployment zones, exit points, spawn points, searchable areas, starting NPC placement, distances and measurements. The map is going to allow you to give a lot of information to your players without having to write big chunks of text. You can get a lot on that map and they should be able to look at it and then easily be able to replicate what they see on the tabletop. It's well worth spending some time developing a system for your scenario maps and this is going to help with continuity as players learn the layout and mapping system you use. They're going to know what to look for as they progress and play out new scenarios. I love drawing top-down maps and so for me this is a really fun part of the game design process. It's really cool to put a map together I like to think of it as world building as well. So I'm, I'm bringing the world to life through these maps. Now I'm going to put lots of different buildings on there and it's important to make it clear to the players they don't need to replicate it exactly. But I would put something like for specific buildings that are important to objectives, I would just say make sure this building is here and say here and then I would put down the size of the building and then up to players to use something that represents that. As long as you're clear as to exactly what they have to have and then the rest is a serving suggestion if you like. So it's up to them to use the terrain that they have. And I'll tell you, Bolt Action do a fantastic job in their campaign books. Their top-down maps are brilliant. They really set the scene, start creating the immersion in the game. It's awesome to learn about the history as well and just the world building that they're creating with those maps is immense. So that's something to take a look at and I've covered it in a few videos where I've gone through some of their campaign books if you'd like to have a look in more detail. But a great example there. Earlier we talked about how important it is to have clear objectives and that's the same for win conditions and these win conditions are crucial in designing good playable scenarios. Players need to know exactly what they need to do to win that game. And this can vary from destroying a certain number of units to achieving those specific objectives we talked about earlier. Ideally, the win conditions should be achievable and challenging so that players feel a sense of accomplishment when they succeed. And it shouldn't be a given that they're going to be guaranteed to achieve it. 
In a recent blog post, I discussed the rulebook structure and how important layout is to help inform players and keep the win conditions clear and concise. Bullet points are a great tool to tell players exactly what they must achieve to meet the winning conditions. And you can include secondary objectives and it's good practice to put those in a separate section with their own headers and bullet points. Doing that makes sure that the main objectives and secondary objectives are well defined. So you can still win and not achieve those secondary objectives. And that's got to be clear to the players as well. Now we're on to play testing. And in a previous post and video that's coming up soon, I've discussed play testing the core mechanics. But play testing doesn't just end there. It's essential to ensure that scenarios are fun to play and that they work. You can look at balancing them. And for me with Population Z, I really had to make sure I got the right number of zombies there. So the threat level was high enough to put pressure on the players whilst giving them a challenging scenario. Proper playtesting is going to allow us to see how different factions and units will interact with each other and identify any potential issues. Additionally, playtesting can help us see how players react to specific scenarios and objectives, and then we can make those adjustments as needed. But it's amazing how just switching out a faction or even sometimes just one or two little abilities can have a big impact on specific scenarios. And playtesting is going to be crucial to pick that up. So I like to think of playtesting as never ending. And when you develop a new scenario as an expansion, supplement or even a new character or weapon, playtesting is essential to ensure it works alongside the core mechanics, previous scenarios and existing characters. And it's so easy to make a new character that can be combined with an existing character to then make an overpowered combination. So it really is worth thinking about all the previous scenarios you've created and think about how any new characters are going to interact with those. I think it's easy to make a core book and then design a campaign that accompanies that and then go off making those expansions and almost forget about what you've included in the previous campaign. And players are going to go back and play that campaign a number of times. Maybe they're going to use those new characters and go back and try it out differently. So we've got to take everything into account and we've got to be very careful when coming up with new characters that we don't just design them in isolation to other aspects of the game. The good news is playtesting is fun. The process is full of discoveries, there's problem solving along the way, and I've grown to look forward to and enjoy the playtesting sessions a lot. And so now this is going to be part of my job going forward. I'm going to be playtesting every week. Any time I come up with a new idea, new character, a new scenario, or maybe even just a new weapon or item or gear, I'm going to play test that and then, like I said, I'm going to take it back and play some of the old scenarios and make it all work together. So play test, play test, play test. I don't think you can play test enough. I've written a blog post that accompanies this podcast episode, and but I didn't include in that about narrative. I will be focusing a lot on narrative going forward, but I'm just going to touch on it here because I think narrative is a massive part of the scenario design. And it's a really nice idea to include some narrative as an introduction to the scenario your players are going to play out. Now, this could be short. And in the past, I've been kind of hot on just doing a very short paragraph to get people ready to play and get them stuck in. But I've changed my mind since I came out with Weekend Warriors. And now I really like the idea of quite a lot of narrative. So I'm going in the opposite direction for Population Z. And I'm kind of following what Moonstone has done. And if you're not familiar with Moonstone, that's a tabletop fantasy game, whimsical fantasy, a fantastic social game. You play with a card mechanic, so you're bluffing your opponent. It's really awesome. But the game and the world building behind the game are just fantastic. And there's a huge amount of narrative in there. In fact, what they've done is they've written a whole story like a novel. And then they've used that novel and broken it up into sections. And as they bring out new expansions for the game, you're getting to find out more about that novel as the game unfolds, which is so cool. So when you go into a scenario, you're going to get an A4 page of narrative to read through. And that's going to serve as your introduction. It's going to set the scene, give you the vibe. You're going to get a great sense of atmosphere and then combine that with a good map and a good description of objectives and what you've got to do to win the scenario. It's just a great combination. 
So in population Z, I'm going to be doing a very similar thing. You're going to find out a lot about the area, the reasons behind going in, and your characters that I call survivors in population Z, they've got to have a reason just to go on this scenario. It shouldn't just be a case of going along just for the sake of it. It's got to be important. And again, there's got to be consequences in there. And you can build that consequence into the narrative and the introduction. So yeah, I'm working on this a lot. This is a big part of my game going forward. And I'm going to include it in other games because I'm going to be focusing on solo and co-op games. And I think when you play a solo game, having that extra narrative is really fun. And you can read through, start to build that world in your mind, get more information about it. And yeah, I think it's just a great way to go. And so I'm going to come away from what I originally thought, which was having it nice and short, a bit like Kill Team. You get a very brief introduction to the mission there's not that much at stake it doesn't seem that important to go in but I found with Moonstone I care about those characters and what happens to them in the game and I want to put that across in Population Z. There we go there's some of my thoughts on how to design scenarios for tabletop skirmish games and overall designing scenarios is vital to creating engaging tabletop skirmish games. By creating scenarios with variation, clear objectives narrative immersion, campaign progression, challenging win conditions, a solid map and good playtesting, you can create memorable and enjoyable gaming experiences for your players and that's what it's all about. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on the subject so join in the conversation in the comments down below, It'd be great to hear what you think and I always get stuck in and reply to the comments as well so I do see everything that goes down there so yeah it'd be awesome to hear from you. If you like to read blog posts, then head over to my website. I'll put a link down below where you can read all the blog posts that tie in with this new series. So anything I cover here in an episode, you can be assured there'll be a blog post about it too. Look out for my new game, Population Z, Welcome to Huntsville, launching in January 2024. You're going to see a lot more about it over the next few months. So keep an eye out here on YouTube and also come and join me on Facebook. I've got the Facebook group there and my main Facebook page. I hang out there most of the time. And if you'd like to join, there's links down below. I also post links to my blog post on LinkedIn, Twitter and Instagram. But most of the time you'll find me on Facebook or here on YouTube. Thanks again for listening. If you did enjoy it or you got anything from the podcast at all, it'd be brilliant if you hit the like button, subscribe to keep up to date with all the new episodes, and I look forward to seeing you here next time on the TTSG Solo Cast.